everybody, it's Lon Sybin, and we are back with the NVIDIA Shield tablet because uh, I just upgraded this to Android M, which is the new version of Android 6.0. Kind of an incremental change over Android Lollipop, which is what uh, most of these Shield tablets are running with out of the box, but it does add a very significant feature related to SD cards. So you can now put an SD card in the slot up here and use that as main storage. So if you don't have enough room on your tablet with the 16 gigabytes of internal storage, you can put in an SD card format it a certain way and have that replace your internal storage. This is a very big difference between uh, what you could do in the prior version, which was to move selected apps over to the card. Some apps supported that, many did not. Some partially moved over but left their data on internal storage. So it was never a perfect kind of scenario. Uh, this new feature will allow you to actually use every bit of that card like you would the internal memory and really free up quite a bit of space. However, if you are already using a SD card on your tablet, you definitely want to back it up first because it requires formatting and erasing the card completely in order to gain that feature. Now you still have the ability to use it the way you were using it, which I'll show you as well, uh, but this new feature is something you definitely want to think about before implementing, before you uh, run into some trouble because there are definitely some caveats with that. So what I'm going to do is just switch over to our tablet real quick here. I have a card that's about to get pushed in. I can't really get it in with my fingers, so I'm just going to use this unplugged uh, lightning cable here to get it in there just because it makes it a little bit easier. Now you'll see I got a message up here, a little notification that we've inserted an SD card. Now I have an option to set it up and what that's going to do is give us two choices. I can use this as portable storage, which is exactly how we were using SD cards in the past with the Android, I could put files on here, take the card out and put it into a different computer, or we can adopt this storage card for our tablet and use it as internal storage. So I'm gonna select that option right now. We're gonna click on next here and it's giving us a warning here saying, look, we're gonna lose everything on this card. They mean this. This card will now uh, become melded to this tablet and we're just gonna go ahead and uh, press forward with that. It's going to format this card and when it's done, uh, we'll come back and take a look at it. Now, while we're waiting for this to format, uh, you should also know that you cannot take this card out and put it into another device either. It is becoming uh, specifically encrypted for this exact tablet. So even if I had another NVIDIA tablet here, which I do, and I'll show you in a minute, uh, you can't take this card out and put it in another device. It is going to be assigned to this exact device here. So that means backing up your data is going to be important, just as important as it is uh, right now with the internal storage, because if you lose uh, your tablet here, you lose the data, even if you still have the card. So even if you sent it back in and got a replacement or something, that new tablet is not going to work uh, with your card. So I'm gonna let this finish formatting, and when it's done, uh, we'll come back and take a look and see how it works and uh, do some experiments with it. All right, the formatting is done. It's now giving me the option to move over the rest of the stuff that we had on internal storage, which I'm going to do right now. And you can also do that later if you want. Now it's interesting about how this new adoption feature works is that you still have access to your internal storage and you can still decide what lives on the SD card and what lives on internal storage. So it's actually very flexible, more so than I thought it would be. Uh, so let me show you what I mean by that. So I've got my storage and USB settings pulled up here from the uh, settings screen and you can see that my uh, SanDisk card has 298 megabytes used out of almost 15 gigabytes, whereas the internal storage has about 3.2 gigabytes used. And what I wanna do is move one of the apps over. So your apps are not going to be transferred over automatically. Uh, any new app that goes in will come over initially when you first install it if the SD card is in, but your apps that were on there when you did this initial formatting uh, will not all come over initially. So you need to go and move those uh, yourself when you uh, get everything installed. So I'm gonna go over here to the apps and uh, pull up one that uh, I wanna move over. So I'm gonna go find DOSBox Turbo here. I'm gonna click on that and I'm going to go uh, and change its location. So right now you can see that uh, it is on the internal storage. I'm going to tap on change and I'm going to select our SanDisk SD card. I'm going to click on move here and that's going to move the application, uh, but also all of its data. And why this is different than what we had before with moving things to SD card is that typically moving the application to SD card only move the application, not its data. And some of these games take up a lot of storage on the data side, not on the application side. This moves all of it over as a package. Uh, and what will happen here after we are done is you can see that we are now on the SanDisk uh, SD card. And if I go back to the main menu of my 
device here. You can see my DOSBox Turbo is available there. I'm going to tap on it, load up DOSBox, and it should work off the SD card just as well as it works off of the internal storage. You will see, though, that we've got this crazy new directory here. Uh, this is part of how all this new stuff works, is that it's uh, doing some things behind the scenes to reference the physical location on the card that it wasn't doing before. So if you have an old application that is looking for files in a very specific place, uh, this is not going to work for those older apps. But most apps are referencing uh, kind of a virtual location, basically saying user's home directory and this directory versus an actual specific directory. And it's kind of complicated, but bottom line is things like DOSBox here are recognizing that this uh, crazy address is where things should be located. Uh, and some apps which are, you know, again, physically coded to a very specific location that don't have the flexibility of uh, just referencing a user's uh, virtual location are going to have some issues. But uh, in this case, this app works fine, and I suspect many others will as well. But if it doesn't work, you can still, of course, leave it on the internal storage. Now what we're going to do, though, is pop out out this card and see what happens when we plug it into something else. So we're going to try to do this the correct way and we'll go over here to SanDisk SD card and I'm going to tap on that in our settings and I'm going to go over here to the uh, eject option and I'm going to select that and we're going to get a warning here. It says when you eject this SD card, uh, the apps on it will stop working and nothing's going to be available until the card is reinserted. So that makes a lot of sense to me. So I'm just going to say, okay, eject it and we'll let that uh, process on there for a second. And once we can pop that card out, uh, we should be able to do something else with this, I guess, which is a surprise to me also. I didn't think you'd have this kind of flexibility. So that card is out. It knows it's not inserted. If it gets put back in later, it will recognize that it's there. Uh, but you'll see now that I don't have DOSBox available to me because that app uh, was on the SD card. I have a manager app that's still on the internal storage, but the actual DOSBox app is not there. So if I grab this card now and put it back in, let me grab my uh, little pusher here and push it back in here again, I think we should see that app uh, pop up automatically when the uh, card gets reinserted. So you do have some flexibility here for uh, taking this card out and putting it back in, provided you eject it properly. It's going to shut down the apps that are running off the card and allow you to still use your device, maybe put in a card and use it as portable storage also. So it actually is a little bit more flexible than I thought it was going to be uh, when I first started playing with this. But what happens when we plug it into a different tablet? Let's see. All right, so I'm going to move in another NVIDIA tablet here, and we're going to uh, pop out the card that I have in there. I just wanted to show you what it looks like when an SD card that it can read is inserted. So I'm going to unmount that uh, existing card, and this is on uh, the prior version of uh, Android Lollipop. We're going to pop out that old card, and what I'm going to do next is put in the card that uh, we formatted for internal use on the other tablet. So what should happen now is actually nothing. We should not even be able to mount this card. Uh, so I've inserted the card, now I have an option to mount it, but uh, what's going to happen here is as I tap on it, I'm going to be able to not do anything with it because it simply can't recognize it because this card has been encrypted uh, only for use on the other tablet. Now what I can do though is take the card out of the other tablet because this card wasn't formatted for use as internal storage, and I can put it back in this one. Even though we have a card paired up already for internal storage, that card is not plugged in right now, uh, so I can insert this other SD card. It shows up as portable storage and I can uh, use it as such, maybe to move some files back and forth between my computer and my tablet or something like that. So you don't lose any functionality uh, by enabling this feature. You really gain some functionality because you can still uh, pop out the card, just you won't have access to the apps that are stored on it. Now, one other thing to look at here and, and something to be very careful about is that if you do tap on there while the card is not inserted, the internal card, you get an option here to forget it. However, if you forget the card, uh, that means even though the data is still on the card, it will never work again on this tablet. So be careful not to click forget because if you click forget, their, your card will be uh, inaccessible to your tablet uh, once again. So lots of caveats here that you need to be careful about, uh, but I do think this adds a tremendous amount of functionality because you really are getting a, away from the limitations that we had in moving applications in the Android platform over to an SD card. Uh, so you're you know, giving up a little bit in that the card can only be used on the device that it's formatted for, but as long as you're keeping good backups of that device, I don't think it's as big of a problem. Uh, you definitely want to get faster cards than uh, what you might get you know, off the bargain bin at the department store or something. So do check out my video about all the different speed types related to uh, SD cards because you definitely want to get something that is as close to the speed of the internal storage as you can, especially if you are an Android gamer and pushing a lot of data back and forth. Uh, you want the fastest read speeds you can find. Uh, so definitely be sure to look at that video and get a sense as to what you want to look at there. But I did want to do this video just to explain how all this marshmallow SD card stuff works. It's a lot 
more flexible than I thought it was going to be. And you just have to kind of think about it as to how you really want to plan out your usage with it uh, before you get started. Because although it's easy to get going with it, it's also very easy to lose data. And I wanted to make sure everyone saw this before they started upgrading. That Marshmallow upgrade is going to be pushed out uh, very shortly to your Shield tablet and many other Android devices. You probably already have it, uh, perhaps if you found this video via a search. So uh, definitely take what you just saw and make some notes, uh, back up your data, and then have some fun with your new functionality. This is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the generosity of my Patreon supporters. If you find the channel helpful, you too can contribute for as little as a dollar a month. Visit lon.tv slash Patreon to learn more.